Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League round of 32, Group G from BSL 17. Upper right hand corner, we got Hedgek starting as the purple Zerg. Bottom left corner, we got Zuz Zazu, aka Top Speed, starting as the yellow Zerg. This is a four player map. Shooting break, where you've got the optional two gas to do something interesting with. I'm waiting for a Zerg. I'm curious. I feel like there is a method to make that quick three gas work somehow in one of these matchups for Zerg, because Zerg tends to be the most gas dependent of the three races. Haven't seen it yet, and I will be excited to see it if it comes. Maybe interesting three hatch play, like so you can do something akin to a two point five hatch without worrying about the initial three gases. Part of the problem is it is, I believe, let me double check before I make a statement that's patently false, not that I've haven't done that many times in the past. Yeah, it is split between 5,000 and 1,000. So the gas in the rear here, <laughs> gas in the rear, but I'm bumpsh, uh, is only 1,000 rather than, so it's split between the typical 5,000 and a, a single geyser. Nevertheless, despite toilet humor, we are going to proceed. <laughs> and I will say hello. Out to Twitch chat land. It looks like we have an overpool up right hand corner. Same on the opposite side. Hedgic up. Barely half a drone, it looks like. Actually, never mind. Things looking dead even otherwise. Gas, but no gas yet from Hedgic. So it looks like Hedgic might be going for a slight. Yeah, he's sneaking out one drone above gas momentarily. Or maybe that's just a, a bit of a delay. It looks like that's going to be a half second off. So we have identical builds at cross positions, both because it's split map positions, both overlords are scouting the wrong direction. So both players are going to end up in the dark, which might lead to a few more Zerglings produced early from both players. So it could be the decider right off the bat is who does the best job babysitting the Zerglings here in the initial stages and also how many Zerglings are produced on either side. It looks like we are saving up to go for the full six from Zazu's side. Is he going to go for the full six? Waiting on that last larva. Looks like it's pausing right this second. In the meantime, Hedgick immediately going to the full six. And this could be, I, I know it seems silly, but this could be the determining factor. Interesting Zazu skipping one of the Zerglings to opt for faster speed. Hedgick going for speed. It'll be a few minutes later, but he's going to be up two Zerglings. And I don't know that that small pocket of time is going to give Zazu any advantages. I don't think it was worth that Zergling skip. Only a single Zergling being sent out, however, from Hedgick. Right this second. If he encounters his opponent, so sees the Zergling coming back across, so might be able to deny information and get information otherwise. And let's see if the Overlords get... Yeah, Hedgick immediately redirects the Overlords. Where I don't see an Overlord direction opposite side. And the natural expansion has been spotted from Zazu, but he doesn't have a lot of information otherwise. Moving his Zerglings out. One is trapped at the top corner, so that's eight in total. This Zergling is going to be able to spot that as it comes across. Hedgek has a larger supply. Zazu, in the meantime, has snuck out an additional drone. But Hedgek moving out. And it, right there, so Zazu, this is the few moments where he has that speed advantage. Looking to engage, is actually able to slip by and has now breached the main. A few Zerglings encountered otherwise. The drones actually, one getting taken out, putting Hedgek down two drones now after that additional kill. So things playing out well for Zazu. So where I thought, wow, and getting three drone kills overall. So where I thought that little bit of latent Zergling speed was not going to be worthwhile. Instead, it looks like it is going to be the game winning decision. A creep colony immediately dropped to seal that. Lair is up on both ends. Zazu, after that creep colony, and after dropping, does he drop the Spire yet? He's not dropped the Spire as of yet. So Hedgick actually going to end up ahead in dropping the Spire, interestingly enough. So that's odd. So not opting to drop the Spire just yet. Zerglings getting caught in the off guard by Hedgick. Zazu doesn't look like he got the better of the exchange, however. Hedgick still down a drone, but... Increase, somehow behind all of this, is able to get some additional drones down. Finally, the Spire being dropped in the midst of all of this. And Zazu, once again, able to 
breach the drone drawing some of the zerglings off as they were on attack maneuver that might be sufficient to buy some time but hedgick once again finds zerglings interior to his base another drone goes down how is hedgick finding the resources however to make all of this happen and stay ahead i am puzzled by that in the meantime the zerglings siphoning back up to the natural expansion only a single zergling remains so many of the zerglings taken out i guess that's an aspect on top of this is where zazu has had where he's ended up losing a good number of zerglings as he's engaged here hedrick has had zerglings remaining in the meantime though zazu has a three worker lead but he's going to end up significantly behind in the spire which means we're going to have mutalisks potentially out for hedrick out in the air looks like scourge are going to be produced instead potentially to pick off overlords here it's certainly at least two of these overlords going to get wiped out I don't know that Hedgick is going to be able to breach otherwise between the six Zerglings that are remaining and that Sutton colony. I'm not sure how... I'm actually kind of flabbergasted that Hedgick is still somehow not just uh, looking in a strong position despite all of the drone losses, but potentially ahead. With the later Spire, we do see Mutalix now being produced, so it looks like Hedgick, he's grabbing his natural expansion gas somewhat earlier than Zazu. Overlord's been found. So this is going to put Zazu in the red. Does that Overlord get spotted? Yes. So he's going to be in the red for quite some time. But keep in mind those four Mutalisks are still out and in the air. As Hedrick, it looks like he's got one and he's got a few on delay. It looks like they are not moving across the map, however. Where are they? There they are to the north. So moving to the north... For reasons unknown, the Zergling's still there for Hedgick. Zergling's being taken out otherwise. I think basically what happened was, is Hedgick just had remaining Zerglings, and Zazu over-defended, expecting a counterattack with the Zerglings that remained. Two Mulesk versus four, but a closer spawn position. The Zerglings not staying underneath to absorb additional damage. The Scourge moving up, able to equalize things, and now all of a sudden, if it wasn't a strong advantage prior now it's definitely a strong advantage as Hedgick loses additional mutalisks trying to move in with the scourge but this should be much easier to micro against for Hedgick than zazu is the scourge gonna make it yeah it looks like that scourge able to get all the way okay they're finally picked off by zazu Hedgick with a bit of a supply lead however still down two drones that could be significant except i think so we got two drones there on gas where we have a full three for Hedgick at the natural expansion, and that is providing more gas to Hedgick, which theoretically means more Mutalisks. We are seeing a skip of Mutalisk production and armor being grabbed from Zazu to try to equalize things over the long run. Keep in mind this is best of one to advance on both ends. Number of Scourge in open air. Still anybody's match. Zazu starting to creep ahead, though. Down so actually, what do I want to call this situation? He's down supply but up workers. So if he can just hold on and play passively and allow that armor to complete and can maybe get another hatchery down for some spare larva at some point. We'll see. Right now, let's try to get a look at the mutilus count. He's way down in the mutilus count, however. This is four versus a full nine on the opposite end. However, Hedgick just now starting his armor. It'll be a question of when does Hedgick decide to engage with these Mutalisks. He still, despite that armor upgrade, when it finishes, still has a superior number overall. Zergling getting cleared on the front. It looks like some additional Zerglings just kind of moving out and around the map. This Zergling spotted bottom right. It's going to get picked off. That at least alerts Zazu to a position, but that Overlord's been spotted. And unfortunately for Hedgick, because that Zergling found that Overlord... Never mind. Not going to go for the for the Overlord. Instead, repositioning. We have some Scourge flying in from an opposite angle. Drone picked off. I missed it on the gas at the natural, allowing Zazu to continue that lead. We have a good amount of Scourge alongside, but an inferior amount of Mutalisks, and I think Zazu recognizes that, so he's probably going to back off and wait for Carapace. So maybe a few moments before he engages. He still has the option to take out this Overlord to the south. He could use the Scourge as a barrier in between. Right now, not wanting to expend it. So now, yeah, using it for the, the closer troops. The Scourge getting taken out on both ends. The Overlord's still not down. 
And that was a very fast clear from Hedgick. That's going to preserve the Overlord, although he might want to draw it back. Never mind. Just going to let it get taken out. It's going to supply cap him right this second, which is not the best scenario. But he's still got a superior Air Force. And again, we're seeing the situation. I've seen this, it feels like, in several matches now where Hedgick's been involved, where we have an upgrade that might not be able to be capitalized on in the time windows where they have... Uh, Discover themselves. So here we at plus one carapace just finishing. Zazu wandering out to potentially pick a fight. But I think Hedgick has enough of a army plus the close reinforcement positions where he should be able to absorb this. He's still down four drones. But it's going to be a considerable amount of time before his armor's finished. So Overlord gets sacked. He's engaging at close positions. Able to micro out of a few Scorch hits. It looks like the majority of the Scorch hits happened up top. Hedgick trying to micro this. You can see Zazu just looking for a full engagement. Now, Hedgick just fully engaging. That Overlord is absorbing some of the hits. But it looks like I take back what I said. The close reinforcement point is not going to be sufficient. And now Zazu able to have the superior air army because that plus one carapace moving in. Getting a few additional hits. Zazu continuing to hold that four drone lead. Armor just now completing opposite end. Zazu actually just sneaking these upgrades here and there. It seems to be a, a vital part of his game plan, and it's really paid off in both instances. So Zazu's drawn back. He's got a massive supply lead right now. More Zerglings making the way across. I think this might be insurmountable for Hedgick right this second. He's going to have to play risky, and the Zerglings getting expended at the interior 6 o'clock location. Zazu dropping an expansion at the 9 o'clock, feeling comfortable enough in his air army to do so. And right now, Hedgick doesn't have a lot of Zerglings that he can expend to move across the field to provide the detection he latently needs. Although the drone count has evened up, he's down significant amounts of supply. And that's almost entirely in Mutalisks. So moving out was maybe hoping to catch an Overlord. It's going to poke at it. The Zerglings making the way forward. That bit of visual information critical. More Mutalisks grouping up, and yeah, this is just going to be a larger air army, so these Scourge have to be incredible. The Zerglings trying to block the lines. Hedgick now re-engaging. The Scourge moving in now that they're fully committed. A good spread, but there's still just too many, and Zazu has Mutalisks rallied to this location, so he should win the air army fight, and that should be game. Well fought by Hedgick, but he's going to have to drop to the loser's match to finish things out. Zazu advances. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.